welcome back friends we are talking about uh, the different techniques of physical mapping or cytogenetic mapping in the previous video we have talked about the somatic cell hybridization process which is a very important technique of mapping the genes physically or deriving the genes uh, position uh, related with each other and also uh, knowing the position of a gene in a particular chromosome and we have seen the process of hat selected medium or hat uh, medium selection of hybridomas which is the cells fused with human and mouse somatic cell okay now <clears throat> the second process which is called radiation hybridization is much more similar with the somatic cell hybridization so that's why i'm not going to tell detail about uh, this has radiation hybridization this is also the hybridization of two cell lines like human and mouse somatic cells but this kind of hybridization again will be pro will produce this hybridoma cells and then we'll select them and finally the resulting method or the methodology for predicting the presence of genes are exactly the same that i have discussed before for somatic cell hybridization but the only difference here remember in case of the somatic cell hybridization after the production of this hybridomas this hybridoma soon lose this uh, start to lose those human chromosomes there's a basic tendency of losing the human chromosomes or elimination of the human chromosomes from the system but also mouse chromosomes can be eliminated and this kind of elimination elimination can lead up to the generation of those hybridomas which are consisting of only human chromosomes not a single mouse chromosome it can also result in the production of hybridomas which can only contain mouse chromosomes no human chromosomes in fact those type of hybridomas will generate more but there are few cells will be generated in such a way which are having only human chromosomes no mouse chromosome now those cells will be allowed to be cultured few generations and then produce a cell line then from the cell line we utilize some of the markers like g1 g3 in this case g1 g2 g3 those markers and we can tag those markers utilizing some chromosome dye like dapi or say uh, gms and different type of dye sometimes also we can tag them with different probes and we can also tag we can also look for the biochemical assay for the presence of these genetic markers remember we cannot rely on one or two physical expression physiological expression we need to depend on many expression many mode of expression together okay now in case of this radiation hybridization here remember in case of somatic cell hybridization the elimination happens randomly through natural process because two different type of genes two different type of chromosomes cannot stay together just like that because there are a lot of variation between this mouse chromosome and human chromosome so some some part of the chromosomes are getting eliminated a particular species of chromosome is getting eliminated from the system but in case of radiation uh, hybridization technique we are eliminating our desired system chromosome for example say if we want to eliminate the chromosomes of mouse we just irradiate the mouse cells before the hybridization this is important we are irradiating those chromosomes of mouse cells we are cleaving those mouse cells before the hybridization with uv irradiation okay so the process will vary in this way rest of the part remains the same the selection procedure and everything remains the same but the difference will be here so uv irradiation will degrade the chromosomes that are present in the mouse cell so they will be degraded just like that or example we can also use this uv radiation to degrade the chromosomes of human cells whatever now by degrading the chromosome of a particular cell type then we allow these two cells to be fused so one of the cells are having the chromosomes intact another of the cells is having eliminated chromosomes so utilization of the uv will create cleavage between the chromosomes or cleave between dna so we are having dna segments instead of long stretch of dna and long stretch of chromosome we are having segments of dna okay now this segment of dna can actually incorporate with other type usually what it does is that usually uv radiation is done to the human type of cells 
in in basic experiments that have conducted before uv radiation is done for the human type of chromosome then what happens so let me uh, do this here let me change this part a little bit let let us assume here this is the human type and this is mouse type so we are irradiating uh, UV radiating the chromosome of human to make it fragmentalized. Now this chromosome after fusion is going to be incorporated with the mouse chromosome. In some examples they are going to be incorporated in the mouse chromosomes. Okay. So we are having a mouse chromosome stacked some regions of the human chromosomes. Now there are physical properties of this mouse and human chromosomes based on the chromosome staining. So we can easily identify whether the chromosome is mouse origin or human origin by looking at the stained chromosome. Okay. So by looking at the pattern that is formed in the inside the chromosome, we can tell this is the part of human chromosome, this is the part of the mouse chromosome. So after this process is done, production of hybridoma, we take those cells and we stain them. After staining, we compare the banding pattern and by noticing the banding pattern we can tell whether genes or genetic markers we are talking are traveled together or not because the human genes as they are incorporated in the mouse genome they disrupt the function of some mouse gene and they this mouse genome and this hybridomas are getting some of the features of human gene so the features from this heterocaryon is going to tell us whether which part of the genetic marker is incorporated and which part is not incorporated. Okay. And also, making uh, or producing many different cell lines, we can actually look for the presence of the different genetic markers with respect to one another. Okay. So again, if we produce a lot of different cell lines from this heterocaryon, then we compare the features, then we can finally produce things like that we can get a result that whether two genes are related or where the genes are placed or not okay so this is the simple difference between radiation hybridization and somatic cell hybridization simply the irradiation or the elimination is brought about in case of radiation hybridization technique is via uv radiation but in case of somatic cell hybridization the technique is just random now again the idea remains the same that UV radiation is going to cut the chromosome, is going to cut or break the DNA randomly. So again, in the previous case of somatic hybridization, the process was random, but again also the breakage is random. The breakage between this chromosome and DNA segment is random in case of UV radiation also. So random breakage is done, then the fusion, but the important thing here, the incorporation of this segment chromosome or segmented chromosome into the mouse chromosome and then it changes the bending pattern of the chromosome okay so then incorporation incorporation and it give rise to change in bending pattern And this change in banding pattern is going to tell us the exact physical map of two or three genes. Okay, so this is a very similar technique with somatic cell hybridization. But both the case, somatic cell hybridization and radiation hybridization, what we are doing, we are actually depending indirectly, we are actually placing the gene indirectly into the map. So what we are looking at, we are doing experiments, we are doing, we are looking at a lot of different cell lines and from looking at them we can tell that these two genes are placed in this chromosome. But none of this experiment is conducted in front of our direct observation, right? So we cannot visualize the genes. But the third type, fluorescent in situ hybridization is a technique in which we can actually visualize those genes, actually visualize where two genes are present. So this is much more specific, this is much more reliable because you can look in front of your eyes that these two genes, G1 and G2 are present in the same chromosome and they are giving you the fluorescence, 
right so that's why this part is the most relevant and most reliable one nowadays okay this is a pretty new technique to map chromosomes but this is found to be very very effective okay in the future video we will be talking about talking about this fluorescent in situ hybridization there are two different types we'll be talking fluorescent type okay so i hope this video is helping you thank you